Hey guys, Sean here from VisibleDark.ca. Thanks for tuning in. Um, this is just a short, quick video just to let everyone know that there is a new script in the latest update for PixInsight. Um, so if you've updated to version 1.8.8-8, um, this uh, new script will be available and it is designed to remove gradients from your images and it works really really well um, i'm actually really impressed with it i tried it on uh, this image here which we're looking at of ngc 5128 um, this is without using the script and this is with using the script and i think uh, it should be fairly noticeable even in the video uh, that the gradients um, are removed quite nicely from this image compared to uh, this master right here, this master light. Um, there's a lot of gradient occurring here in the in different areas. Uh, we can see some gradient pattern here, um, but it uh, completely removed um, that gradient and made things a lot easier for processing. So this may be something that you're interested in. Uh, if you're if you are interested. Uh, Stick around and uh, I'll show you where to find it and basically how to use it. And then in a future video, we'll get into more details about it um, so that uh, we can better understand uh, the, the new script. So as it stands, the new script is found under uh, script batch processing and it's called normalized scale gradient. And it is uh, it was created by John Murphy, and I believe he's part of the PixInsight team, but uh, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I think he is. Anyways, he's done a really fabulous job with this and um, very impressive work um, that uh, the script uh, does. So how do you use it? Uh, really simple to use. Um, what I would do, and you don't necessarily have to do it this way, but I use the weighted batch preprocessing script um, to basically calibrate and register uh, my raw files. And um, so what I would do is put all of my files into the weighted batch preprocessing uh, script, run that script so that it generates um, the registered, calibrated and registered files because uh, you have to give normalized scale gradient, uh, the normalized scale gradient script, you have to give it calibrated registered images. So the quickest, easiest way to do that is to use uh, weighted batch preprocessing to generate those and then import them into the normalized scale gradient. Now, um, this is improved normalization for your images. It improves the overall image quality because it's it's uh, instead of having to work with more difficult gradients, if I just go back to this image here, instead of me having to work with more difficult gradients like this image has, uh, this master light, um, I can work with this master light, which has a lot less problems. They, they are not as significant. So something um, it, that is very uh, useful and um, can be very effective in your uh, workflow and the uh, the end result that you're going to achieve when you're processing your images. Um, this is also going to this script, uh, the the uh, uh, normalized scale gradient script is going to help with uh, pixel rejection and um, weighting of the images too. So uh, when you're doing the integration of all of these uh, uh, frames that have been processed through the normalized scale gradient, um, it's going to it's going to help with that integration process, and uh, your end result is going to be uh, much better than if you didn't use it. So it's a little extra work because you have to apply, you have to run individual channels through the script. So in other words, um, you have to run all your red files uh, through the script, and then you have to go back and do it for your green files and your blue files. Um, or your HL for files and O3 files, etc. Um, you have to do them all individually, and uh, and then those files that the normalized scale gradient uh, produces, you can then uh, bring into the image integration process, and you're able to stack those images into your master light frame. Um, so. It, it's a it's a little bit of an extra step, but I guarantee you it's well worth it if you want to check it out. So uh, by all means, uh, uh, have a look at this if you've updated to the latest version of PixInsight. Now, one of the first things that you want to do is determine 
um, a reference frame, which one is going to be the best one to use. So if we go to, uh, we can use Blink to do that. Um, if we go to Blink, we can uh, uh, basically open up these, the files that I've generated here. These are the red channel calibrated and registered. Um, so if I open all of these channels up, I can have a look at them individually and uh, determine which one is going to be the best overall to use as my reference frame. And we'll just uh, let this load up here. And once that's done, we can have a look at things here now. We can sort of skip through this a bit and get an idea of what frames might be better than others and they're all actually fairly decent but if i'm really having a look here um i think i can see if we look at this star right here let me just uh, pull this down a bit uh, if we look at that star right there um, we can see see how it gets elongated there so not as good as the previous frame so these th this one here as example is is better so this was taken on may 6 and it is uh frame number 10. so may 6 frame 10. so we could use that as our reference image uh because it's a it's a good quality the stars are nice and round and tight and we have good contrast with the uh, nebulosity that is occurring in this uh in this target and I'm using my uh, Iris Nebula data here just to sh demonstrate this uh, new script. Um, I could have used the NGC 5128, but I had uh, already started. I wanted to apply this script to my uh, NGC 20, uh, 7023 data. So I ran it through weighted batch preprocessing and uh, created the calibrated and registered files. So anyways, that's why I'm using the, the Iris Nebula here just to show you. So uh, in case you were wondering, um, but this was a great example, um, I thought that uh, demonstrated the uh, ability of the script, um, so the before and the after. So, um, okay, so we've determined our reference frame. Uh, you can determine your reference frame, how you like to do it, uh, what you think is the best way to do it, but um, um, I usually inspect all of my frames manually in Blink uh, and I zoom out and I zoom in and I get a good idea as to what is a good frame and what isn't a good frame after all the years of uh, imaging that I've done. But um, so the, we're going to go to the uh, normalize uh, scale gradient script and we're going to add the red channel files that we were looking at um, in Blink. We're going to add those. And we'll simply locate the uh, reference file that we wanted to use and we can um, set that as our reference frame by clicking set reference and we'll just let it uh, do its thing here so then the next thing that you're going to want to uh, do you can actually the defaults that uh, the default settings are actually really uh, really good and uh, there isn't really uh, a lot of reason to change the default settings so uh, that might be something that uh, uh, we can dive into uh, uh, on a, in another video, uh, changing some of the settings if we need to. But um, uh, as it stands, uh, the actual uh, default settings work quite well in my uh, test, uh, the tests that I've done with this. So I would just suggest leaving things at the default and it works really well. So once you have your reference frame loaded and the light frames loaded that you want the normalized scale gradient script to work on, um, you need to uh, set an output directory and you can do that by uh, clicking the little folder icon there. Um, I already have one set up. I called it NSG, short for normalized scale gradient. Uh, you can name your folder whatever you like, uh, but we'll select that one. So uh, once you've got your reference frame set, your files are loaded and your output directory is selected, uh, all you have to do is click OK and uh, the normalized scale gradient script will go to work. Now, keep in mind that this script is very uh, labor intensive. Uh, it is very, uh, it takes a while for it to uh, do its thing. So um, it isn't fast. Uh, the test, the one test that I did took 20, what was it, 21 minutes to complete. So it isn't something that uh, is gonna be lightning fast. Uh, go grab a coffee or whatever it is that uh, something else that you can do this new, new script that's in there, the normalized scale gradient script works really well. 
Uh, again, as you can see, this is the uh, this is not using the script, and this is using the script. And there's a huge difference between these images in terms of the gradients. So it really does a fabulous job in removing the gradients, and it'll make your processing that much easier. So check it out if you haven't. Um, I hope this video was helpful, and we'll see you in the next video. Okay. All right. You guys take care. Clear skies.